Hello guys, welcome to the Metaphor Cast Season 2. We are outside because, you know, in the British summer it's so amazing sometimes when it's not raining. <laughs> but um, I've got two, um, two friends here and I want to say that they do something quite unique in the scene in that they help people in, um, in terms of like, you know, therapy and they use poetry as a kind of a space for it. Um, so we have Anna Sinsky and Curly Wordy. Do you like to be called Curly or Louise today? Curly Wordy. Cool, Curly Wordy. Um, poetry names. Um, so yeah, guys, um, how are you guys? All good. good. Yeah. <laughs> good. Happy so, that there's some sunshine. It's been like yeah. the worst summer on record, but... Yeah, it has been. It has been, right. Um, so I wanted to kind of kick off in the... Um, you guys both kind of do poetry and you, like uh, Curly, you've got a book out that's supposed to help kids. It's, yeah, it's just about, well, I've just printed the test copy. Oh, I've wicked. got a copy with me. Okay, yeah, I'll hopefully everyone. we'll get you to show that yeah. to the people out there. And um, that should be printed into September and that's that's specifically told in poetic verse and it's to support child bereavement so mm. it kind of comes under the banner of, yeah, theoretic, therapeutic stories, mm. which is cool. poetry as well, yeah. Yeah, and um, Anna, you are with, um, you're associated with uh, Mind of Matter who kind of help me in, in terms of mental health issues and things like that and you run workshops for them as well. Yeah. Um, yeah, how's that? How, how's that been in terms of how did you get into that as well? So I do two things in a way. Yeah. So I'm part of the Mind Over Matter team okay. and we do like different workshops, events that are supposed to be about, um, you know, just addressing mental health issues okay. through spoken word poetry and the arts. And then I also have my private practice oh, cool. in London and online. And I use a lot of poetry, a lot of art therapy within that as well. Yeah, and, and second to Anna, same for me. I don't have my own practice, but I'm self-employed as a, exactly, yeah. a holistic play therapist. So How are I, you finding that at the moment? That's amazing, yeah. I've finally made a decision to leave teaching after 10 years because there's a growing need for it. But I, I'm unlike Anna, who probably works out of a practice. I'm a mobile therapist, so I take yeah. toolkits into schools. I work predominantly with teenagers at the minute that are heavily in the care system or neurodivergent predominantly and it, yeah it's empowering and it, like, it's amazing it's, it's privy to see how creative arts and things like poetry and poetry through not just our words but through our creations mm. how it does actually help people heal you know and um yeah so yeah. i love it yeah and I so in a way you do it. you do like the child teenager part i do the yeah. adult part yeah. <laughs> exactly. yeah. yeah yeah do those kind of cross over like overlap when do you kind of like, as, as you work with kids, do you t tend to, like, work with them after going into early adolescence? Or, or do you, have you ever worked with kids before? Like, do, do you ever go into a different age, group, age bracket? I, um, I think that because I, my, my, even before I became a teacher, my interest was always in child development. And uh, all my work as a teacher has been in the early years, and that's all about really... The, the early stepping stones of the foundation years of like how, okay. how you support well-being, self-confidence, emotional development. So then you fast forward into a setting where you're with a child um, therapeutically who may, for whatever reason, have been referred to you because they're having difficulties or challenges. Okay. And you realise that all of it often does go back to this absence of not being seen or heard enough or and not being supported to... Um, to voice their needs and their emotional their, their emotional wants. Okay. So in answer to your question, I, I've worked with a lot of children who's, who've just had a lot of unmet needs, you know, and they, so that, and that can take years to rectify. It may, it may, it may never be rectified or you, you never take things away. You just help okay. make the unbearable bearable and you teach them, you arm them with skills and help them utilize what's within them to, yeah. to understand how to kind of, um, uh, ground themselves and how to not get too triggered or too disassociated, you know. And so I've, I think Anna may have a different answer, but for me, children, because a lot of my traumas and, and emotional upsets happened as a child, and I knew what it felt like not to be offered in the 80s therapy when I really did need it, my whole family did, you know. So I, when I decided to be a therapist, for me, the formative years, the years where it's not your fault, you've got, you know no better, you're cognitively not wired to really understand what's going on. That's when real um, conditioning, the wrong kind of conditioning, can really play havoc with your life later on in life, you know, when you're an adult. So I wanted to go in at those years to be able to support children then so they can kind of 
um, navigate life a bit better, you know, and kind of like have the life them they tools want. Because early, because that is more beneficial. Yeah, yeah because yeah. Um, you know, you realise we all carry that that little child in it, within us, you know, and it's um, when you're actually given a platform, be it in therapy or be it in a, the poetry scene, yeah. where you can voice some of your stories, you realise how important it is to expel. Is there's this ineffable need to expel emotions and tension from the body and if you don't teach children that it's okay to say I don't like that what yeah. you did it's hurt my feelings and for that then listening adult to validate it that you end up um, with a whole host of different things and it can be common traumas it can be that's why the world you know that's why the world is full of people with low self-esteem and yeah. low, no low confidence because there were a lot of, there's a lot of unmet, unmet needs that exist within a lot of us you know and it's about having that more honest dialogue so that's why I go in to teach kids find your voice you it is I want to hear what you've got to say your words are important yeah. um, and yeah and that and that's what brings me the joy you know and I'm sure I'd enjoy it with adults too but I'm not sure why you're what's your reasoning for going into adults and I don't know I mean so I don't I don't ever work with kids I think yeah. that's a kind of whole separate um, whole separate field. I work a lot with inner children. <laughs> so yeah, the inner yeah, child yeah, yeah. within within the adults, I yeah. do work a lot with that. So I guess in a way, yes. Um, but I don't know, I've never seen myself working with kids. I think because I'm also quite, um, I'm quite an existential person, <laughs> okay. I think. I like to kind of ponder philosophical questions and, you know, like existential things. And I, I'm really interested in relationships, human relationships, romantic relationships, sexual relationships, mm. uh, sex as well, how that plays into trauma and art and everything. So I think I've always just been a little bit more drawn in my work to mm. the adult parts. Mm. But that being said, I, I, I do work with inner children. So I yeah. suppose, yeah. Um, yeah, and you know, I mean, it would be amazing if, children got therapy like all children got yeah. therapy when they were because i see adults that obviously didn't mm, yeah. get therapy exactly, and, yeah. you know didn't get that kind of help and mm. sometimes i do think wow if someone was there when you were you know seven or eight or ten or twelve it, it would it would have made a big difference to to the trauma that's right to support um, the um to just have been heard you know and i think i see the same common threads amongst young children and young yeah. adults young teenagers that i work with um, and it and it, it it's hard for them, you know. There'll be this real focus for a long time on the external yeah. validations because they're not wanting to turn the torch on themselves. I spent my life a bit that way, you know. And I, it, you actually, you'll get to a point where the, it won't go away. It will come back and bite you on the ass ten times harder, and it will keep biting you on the ass until you look at it. So the only, yeah. you know, and you owe it to yourself as a person. If you're someone that had experience as a, as a child and you become an adult and you've never looked at it, you owe it to yourself to not give up on self-development. Yeah. Um, but, you know, I mean, you, I could go off on a whole tangent about how society trains us out of emotional reading. Yeah. You know, like the, we are in, intuitive beings. So when we're born, we don't, we don't operate in words. We operate in feeling Feelings. from the body. But yet society teaches us out of listening to our bodies and our feelings and there's a reason for that isn't there conditioning so we just work and you know work yeah. work for capitalism and you know work yeah, you for, get lost in the rat race yeah and, yeah and, and you just divert away from you know really what is important to me yeah. you know and i think the beauty of working with children in therapy is that you can really start to make them see that they are important and i think that belief of like um, I am important to someone. This person does want to hear me. is is so underrated because um, that feeling of just being unimportant to someone or being unimportant to a caregiver, particularly like your mother or your father, is so dam damning. Yeah. You know, um, some of my own upset was driven from you know not being unimportant in many ways to my father. You know, and him not being able to emotionally meet me and my sister where we needed, and and that has driven a lot of my. Um, work, but it took a long time for me to feel brave enough to put pen to paper and put the, let the emotions be the ink, yeah. you know, and actually be brave enough to share it. But um, what an incredible outlet, and I'm sure you'll come on to that after, but what a great outlet poetry is that it, it allows you um, to, to be, the, be the boss of your own therapy. Yeah. 